Well, this is uh, an important uh, testimonial and it's part of the reason why I started doing these testimonials is because I am a targeted individual. Uh, my life is, I may not seem like it to some people, but it's, it's pretty terrible. Government corruption is rampant, as we most of us know nowadays. And as you can see from the title of this video, uh, Social Services is refusing to pay my rent. And um, I've only paid $400 on the 945 And this has to do with uh, Edward Shins that I've talked about before, a PMB Mobility House. Now, I had a, a contract with him where I invested 20000 and he's supposed to pay me back 29000 over four years. So he's supposed to make payments of $604, whatever it is, every month. And it's a direct deposit. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a bank transfer that goes into my bank account automatically through my email. Now, for the last month, I, I told uh, my worker, uh, the supervisor, I told the services that my uh, Ed never sent me the, the payment. So I don't have the money to pay my rent, and uh, Jacqueline, uh, Lori Jacqueline, the casework supervisor at Lori Sackville and uh, Social Services in Nova Scotia, has ba basically ignored me for the first uh, two weeks uh, or more. He didn't answer my calls. He, he usually does that all the time, and uh, he was supposed to call Ed Shin at the beginning of the month to find out if he was going to make the payment, and he never talked to me about it. Never answered me anyway. Uh, the supervisor is a nightmare, but I'm going to tell you more about that in a minute, uh, the conspiracy that's going on against me here. So um, what happened with Ed is that, uh, as you might know from my other video, uh, he charged me for trespassing on the PPA, claiming that, uh, you know, I, I told he told the police I stole stuff out of his warehouse. All I did was take what was mine. And um, he gave me permission to go in. He gave me the keys. The key to, to I still have the key to the warehouse after the key had been taken from me, uh, or previously, uh, when the PPA was first, first given to me, and uh, Ed uh, said he apologized for getting back the keys and said I was permitted back in his warehouse, and then he lies to the police and says I, I wasn't allowed. So I'm going to be going to court uh, in, in September to deal with him. So this is kind of complicated, but it's important, so I'm trying to figure out how to tell you this in sequence so you can co comprehend what's going on. So, um, oh yeah. So, my rent's not paid. Um, uh, the casework supervisor has been it was supposedly was talking to Ed uh, like uh, a few days ago, and Ed, Ed told him, "Oh, I was out in China." Uh, Ed's told that story before. Okay, he didn't go to China. There's no way. He just he just wasn't returning any phone calls, and he didn't want to pay me. So now the casework supervisor, uh, he's got a really bad attitude, and he gets really nasty on the phone, and he he gives me demands, and he doesn't listen to anything I have to say. He's absolutely ignorant. And he, um, he, when he gets ignorant, I have to hang up on him. I just can't listen to him. Now, the problem I have with him is that um, ever since the beginning of December, he's been like this. He's always treated me really shitty. And um, I've had to go back and forth to the, uh, the Laura Sackville uh, office to bring paperwork in and start screaming because he's never answering his calls. And he delayed my uh, application for social assistance for almost three months. Um, if you've been following my case, you know that I have an appeal that I wrote out that's 28 pages. Um, I, I guess I'll provide the link below this so you can see it. And uh, they are sabotaging my, uh, my, my case. It's too complicated to explain right now. I'll probably run out of time. I just want to get back to this uh, issue uh, with, um, with the money. Uh, not, so what happened is social services deducted $600 off my, um, what I'm allowed to, to get which is bare minimum, and without that $600 that Ed didn't give me, and my rent's not paid. So I kept asking. So last time I talked to the supervisor, uh, I asked him, well, when is my, my rent going to get paid? He said, never. He doesn't care. He said, that's your problem. It's your money. You go after him. I said, how are you supposed to go after a person who's a criminal that doesn't want to pay you? <laughs> you know, I'm thinking, is he that stupid? I mean, it, takes, it can take years if you ever even see your money. So um, in the meantime, my rent has to be paid. So, I've gone to a head office uh, for community services on Spring Garden Road many times over the last several months. And every time I bring paperwork there or I try to speak to someone, no one will, no one will talk to me there. No one will answer my phone calls. Basically, what they've done is they've said that any communications with me about anything has to go to this, uh, to this uh, casework supervisor who's being a real asshole. 
And uh, my problem is that I can't deal with him. I need to have a social services office located in Halifax, which they're denying me. So they're, they're making me go way out of town. But I told them as soon as I stop driving my car very soon as my insurance is going to run out, uh, I'm not going to have any transportation. I've explained all this in many of my videos. You see my wheelchair behind you. Well, I can't travel on, on public transit in Halifax because they don't have tie downs on most of the buses to, 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 to secure my wheelchair. Not only that. Even if I could get on the buses, uh, the weather conditions in Halifax six months of the year or more, or I, I can't go outside anyway. There's always snow on the sidewalks. It's always freezing cold. It's like lousy weather. So, and, and I can't go out uh, to go shopping at, uh, with my wheelchair because the grocery store and everything in this neighborhood is really far away from me. And uh, the chair has limitation how far it will go. Ed was supposed to put my brand new uh, $2,000 lithium-ion batteries in there that I paid for, and he just put used batteries in. You never put my brand new batteries in my new wheelchair. So my wheelchair is very limited. It'll run for maybe an hour and it runs out of power. Uh, you can't carry very much groceries on a wheelchair. It's just using a wheelchair by itself is not a, is not a means. My car is, is my mobility device and my car is cheaper than the wheelchair. That wheelchair is at least 35000 and my car doesn't cost anywhere near that. So I'm running out of options. I've already run out of options. It's like I was saying a few, uh, in some of my testimonies earlier. Um, one of these days, uh, these guys are not going to pay my rent, which is what uh, the supervisor told me. He said, yeah, we're not going to pay your rent. So I've got a good landlord, and uh, you know he's, he's trying to do his best. But um, I am not allowed. Uh, I can't go to the Laura Sackville office anymore because I had the police give me a PPA because I told them, which means protection of property, which means uh, you're banned from going on the property for a certain period of time. I don't want to even have to go out to Laura Sackville. It's too far away. Um, the, ca the casework supervisor doesn't answer any of his calls. You know, he never answers me. Now, I was assigned my own casework uh, worker, and um, I met that caseworker over a month ago. And he was a really nice person. And for the last five weeks, every time you call his number, it says that he won't be in the office, he's not available, and, he, he, and he, I can tell that he's being told to do this. And you can tell in his, in his, his tone of voice when he says that he really doesn't want to be doing that. So the last message was, uh, oh, I, I, he says, well, I don't know how long this is going to go on for. I'm, I'm still not, I'm not available and blah, blah, for two days, three days. I don't know how long it's going to be. So basically they've cut him off for, from communicating with me because he was actually kind and helpful. And, and the casework supervisor is, is acting like my, my caseworker. And he's not supposed to be my caseworker. He's supposed to be my casework supervisor. So right now... This casework supervisor is a clever man. He's got everybody fooled in the system. And uh, for whatever reason, everybody's told that they have to uh, transfer all my communications or community services to this casework supervisor. To me, to me, he's nothing but a piece of crap. And he really is. He's really nasty. He's really rude. He's threatening. He's overbearing. He, you know, he's a real dictator. And um, when I told, he told me that uh, Ed said that I banned, uh, I blocked his emails. I said to him, yeah, I blocked his emails because he was sending me na nasty uh, ma messages in my, my email. And I and I and so I don't call Ed. I don't talk to him. I don't uh, send text messages. And I'm not going to talk to him about my money. And even if I talk to him, that's not going to make any difference. But one thing that's not done. Now, the casework supervisor said, well, it's all my fault because I, and he kept repeating this. And, and I said, you're not listening to me. And he kept repeating and talks over my voice. And he kept saying, well, you know, you, you, Ed says you, you blocked uh, his emails. I said, I didn't block his, his, his bank transfers because when you do a bank transfer, it's done inter -electro electronically. And the email comes from his bank. It doesn't come from him. So his bank, uh, if he was making the payment to me, it would have come through. And it's not blocked. And the casework supervisor is a real asshole, doesn't care, he knows what I'm telling him, it's true. So um, I don't know what this game is, all I know is that it's illegal what he's doing. I have a right to have my rent paid, and he's denying me that. And um, for, for you people that might want to, uh, where is it? Oh shit. For you people that might want to call my casework supervisor, to, you know, let's see, what are you doing screwing this guy around like that? See if I can find his phone number here. But I got to do this really quick. Oh, there it is. Um, no, that's not it. Uh, I know the time's running out. I've got the 950 minutes here. Um, that's not it. So his name is Laurie Jacqueline. 
and um, he works out of the Lori Sackville office. And um, there it is. So it's 902-869-3644. He's the casework supervisor. 902-869-3644. Maybe you guys would like to call him up and fill up his, his voicemail and tell him, you know, stop abusing Daniel Tazi. But who knows? So far, nobody in the world's helping me. And like I told the police uh, and, and other people, I said, if my rent's not paid, they're going to leave me homeless. If they leave me homeless, this is why I'm doing this testimonial series. If they leave me homeless, uh, I'm just not going to want to keep living because I've had too much struggles. This has been going on too long. Uh, Halifax is nothing like uh, any uh, Toronto or, or any other big city or anywhere in the U.S. Said, this place is horrible. If you are a victim of government corruption, <laughs> <laughs> you have no recourse. There's no uh, real organizations of any kind that help anybody here. Everything here is run by the by the corrupt government. So uh, it's at 11 minutes, and um, and Ed Shins, yeah, it'd be nice if I could find his phone number real quick, but I probably won't. You know, PMB Mobility House. If you go to the link below my video, I'll put a link there where you can find uh, the story about Ed and all the stuff he's done to me and how uh, he really does owe me for breach of contract, breach of agreement, and uh, all the things that I paid for that he didn't supply. He uh, pretty well ruined my life, but you know, I figured out long ago that Ed is, is just another government uh, uh, guy that's being directed by the government. So him and, the, and welfare are working together. He, he doesn't pay me, and welfare is screwing me around, so my rent's not paid. I'm a victim of really bad crimes. And now ask yourself, why would they be doing this to me? And if you read my whole history about vote cor corruption and things that I've re revealed in my life, you would realize that's why I'm targeted because the information that I'm putting out is very important. And um, if you want to have a free society, you support the people that are, that are speaking truth you know, and uh, that are fighting for their rights. But we don't have a free society anymore, so you can see why. Because no one's uh, fighting for their democracy and, or their freedom anymore. So I had uh, more I wanted to say and I can't remember what it was. All I know is that Ed's still got two of my wheelchairs in his warehouse. In cash, money, things that I paid for that he didn't uh, deliver. Uh, in the wheelchair, including the wheelchair, the quantum one. It's probably thirty-five dollars to $40,000 at least that he owes me. But I can't sue Ed because I don't have the money. Uh, small claims court in this town goes up to $25,000. And I would have five claims against Ed. But I can't sue him because I can't even afford to start the claim against him. And uh, Ed, Ed just laughs. He thinks it's all a big joke. You know, he knows that uh, the, the, the system is so corrupt here that the innocent people here have no recourse. Because he's been screwing disabled people and ripping them off for a very long, long time. And, but it's not just this one business. Every business Ed's ever owned he's been doing this with. You can go on, on, on the links that I'm providing. I did some history research on him. Police have been involved before. But he's well connected with... Uh, with mafia, you know, government criminals that are running the government behind the scenes. He's connected with that stuff. So to me, I don't know. I think it might be a, a lot of military guys or something because uh, it's pretty weird. So this is, uh, for me, um, another desperate uh, plea for somebody out there to help. I have a PayPal thing under all my note, all my pages, and nobody's donating anything, ever. And I'm not sure if that's because PayPal is being blocked, but... I'm really surprised with the, the millions of people that are out there. But you know what else is amazing is how low my view counts are on my testimonials. Because uh, I see on my, uh, on my blogs, my uh, WordPress blogs that I have, I get a lot of viewers. I, I get um, 300,000 a week minimum. And yet my, uh, on YouTube, my view counts are really low uh, for my videos that I'm putting out. So something doesn't make any sense. Because all my videos are on my blogs. And people are watching them on my blogs. So my blogs are telling me that my my views are pretty high, and I have ten different blogs, major ones. So I don't know. It's probably a half a million people every week that goes through all those. So they know who I am. People see my videos, but they see my other reports that I've done. So you can go to a truesoldier.com and see how serious this is, or CanadianSituations.wordpress.com, and I have many other ones. But my battle is not about me so much. Uh, to me. The chemtrailing and uh, the poisoning of the kids with vaccines and everything else they're doing. Yeah, you know, any any truth or knows that we've got some really, really, really big problems in this world. 
the insane literally have taken over but it's getting a lot worse than that the fema camps are running they're trying to cause a third world war the insanity doesn't end because the people that took over control of the world are insane so they have no limit and the insanity has no limit so it's pretty scary stuff anyway all i can do is say this is daniel jitazi this is april 15th and this is uh testimonial 28 please share my testimonials and uh but at the minimum, just download my videos if you can or, or any other stuff you find on my websites because, you know, if I commit suicide one day, uh, they'll just come in and just take everything off the internet. You know, because they'll have access to my computers and whatever else. All I know is that how long am I going to go now? My rent's not paid. Um, so who knows what social services is going to do. Nova Scotia is really, really corrupt. But people who watch television and get entertained by uh, official stories. All they've ever heard in their lives is stories because the officials never tell any truth. They only tell stories. It's all fiction or part fiction, but it's all bullshit and it's all to keep people dumb. They don't tell you anything you need to know. They don't tell you about common law. They don't tell you that the only law in Canada really is common law. Our whole system is corrupt, but it's not just in Canada, it's everywhere. Right now, the American currency is being collapsed worldwide. And so the Canadian currency is going to go with it because the new international currency is now in place. The new international bank is now in place. So Canada's day uh, is coming up pretty soon. Where we're in Canada and the USA, we're going to have some really big problems when we have no currency because nobody's going to want our currency because they're not going to let sell us anything, no food. And they set us up for the big fall because Canada is no longer self-sufficient and most of the U.S.'s production has also been shipped to China and so has Canada. So we have no reason, nothing to give the world uh, to trade for what we want from them. And uh, our food uh, manufacturing and everything else. I've been watching this for like many, many years, watching the destruction of Canada and the USA. It's all planned out, good or bad. I think that whoever's behind it, some people realize that the banking empire of the Rothschilds and the Federal Reserve is the core of most of the problems in this world. So there's a lot of hatred out there that they've been wanting to destroy it. And if you look uh, worldwide, um, everywhere that the Rothschilds set up their banking systems, it, that's people are fighting back and the trend, they're, they're, they're uh, invading the countries with, with Muslims or whatever else, but there's a war going on, guys. And, you know, they're talking about having the war getting nuclear very soon. There's a lot of talk about that. So you need to be worried because uh, there's really bad things coming for this world. Really bad things, and it's already happening. You know, the FEMA camps are up and running. They're picking up homeless people everywhere. Everybody's disappearing. They're not just picking up homeless. They're picking up anyone they want. You know, the Nazis created the camps, and there were, Nazis are still in power. They were never defeated because the Nazis were born out of the USA, out of New York City, which uh, the Jews in New York City. So that's why they want they want to destroy me, because I tell the whole truth. Go to a truesoldier.com or, or weoccupyearth.wordpress.com. There's many websites I have, or chemtrails in our skies, .wordpress.com, or the Fukushima Radiation Tree Reports, .wordpress.com. So now you see I have a lot of websites, and uh, now you know why they're they're uh, not coming after me, but they're coming after all of us. You don't help the people that need help. When you need help one day, it won't be there, because only good people help good people. I just wonder how many good people are remaining. Thank you.